Hi, and welcome to Dr. Vanderveen's AP Chemistry Podcast. Tonight we're talking about effusion and diffusion. Now what I'd like to do in this podcast is to compare effusion with diffusion. They're related, but they're not identical. I'd like to introduce Graham's Law, which is a way about ta- of talking about this quantitatively, and to complete a practice problem. Now, let's talk about molecular speed. The average kinetic energy of a particle is proportional to its molar mass. They are related. Now, the kinetic energy, we know, is equal to one-half times the mass times the velocity squared. We're using this letter mu to represent the speed of a particle containing the average kinetic energy. Now, if you look on your green sheet, this equation is on there saying that the speed of a particle having the the average kinetic energy can be calculated by taking 3 times r times t over the molar mass, this is molar mass, and then taking the square root of the whole thing. So I want to point out that you can actually calculate the, um, the speed of a particle with the average kinetic energy. But there is this inverse relationship. So the larger the mass, larger that molar mass, the lower the average speed, and vice versa. Um, and so if we look at the speeds of gases at 25 degrees Celsius, all right, it's a distribution. All right, they're not all going exactly the same speed. There's, there's a big range. All right, so these are Gaussian distributions. If we look at hydrogen all right, versus helium, versus water, versus nitrogen, versus oxygen, as the molar mass increases from 2 to 4 to uh, 18 to 28 to 36, as the molar mass increases, the average speed decreases. So I wanted to point this out to you. Now, I also want to point out there's a lot of overlap, but we're just talking about the average or the most likely speed that you're likely to, to for those molecules. All right, let's define effusion. When we talk about effusion, we mean the escape of gas particles through a tiny pinhole into a vacuum or an evacuated space. All right, so we've got a picture here of effusion. We've got a tiny pinhole, and the gas, some of the gas molecules can escape through the pinhole into a vacuum. Diffusion is not quite the same thing. Right, diffusion is a little bit broader. In some ways, effusion can be considered as a subset of diffusion. But diffusion is defined as the spread of one substance throughout a space or throughout a second substance by random mixing. Now, this is very important in biology. For example, you can talk about diffusion through a cell membrane, right, which is what's being shown in this picture, right, where the particles eventually spread out. Right, and, and spread out evenly throughout the whole area. All right. The equation we can use to discuss this is called Graham's Law after a Scottish physicist who studied effusion. And what Graham's Law states in words is that the effusion rate of a gas is inversely proportional to the square root of its molar mass. Now, a lot of times what we're interested in with Graham's Law is comparing two different gases and their rates of effusion. So we have an equation here that does that. The ratio of R1 over R2 is equal to the square root of the molar mass 2 over molar mass 1. Notice this inverse relationship. Sometimes when students are trying to remember this, um, that messes them up. This is on your green formula sheet. So this is not an equation you need to memorize. But you do need to know the relationship. Basically, what this is saying, for all intents and purposes, all right, is that more massive particles move at a slower velocity than less massive particles. Notice I'm being very careful about my terminology here. I'm saying massive and not larger. It is related to their mass or their molar masses. Um, and you want to be very specific in your answers here. Don't be vague and say larger. You may not get credit. So this equation is very handy 
right? It has some real world applications. Um, we have some problems we want to be able to do with this. I do want to mention that um, because of collisions, diffusion is a lot more complicated than effusion, and it's actually slower. I mean, this is because a gas particle, that in which of course is in constant motion, its direction is always changing. All right, and so we can talk about the mean free path, which is sort of the net distance it moves, or the average distance it moves between a collision. Right, so it gets a little bit more complicated. To go into this any more depth is really beyond the scope of a first year chemistry course, uh, AP or college. It's something you might encounter until junior or senior year of college. So let's do a typical problem involving Graham's Law. All right, it says, under identical conditions, a sample of an unknown gas effuses into a vacuum at 1.5 times the rate that a sample of argon gas diffuses. Calculate the molar mass of the unknown gas. Well, before we do any math, let's think about this. We know that argon has a molar mass of 39.948 grams per mole. Now, if the unknown gas is diffusing faster, it must mean its molar mass is smaller. All right, so when we set this up, we want to be careful uh, to double check that we do eventually get a smaller molar mass. All right, so let's look at our equation. We know that R1 over R2 is equal to the square root of the molar masses. It's an inverse relationship. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up mm2, my, my molar mass of the unknown, as x. And I'm going to um, let mm1 be the molar mass of argon, which of course we know is 39.948 grams per mole. I'm going to let R1 equals the rate of effusion of argon. I'm going to set that arbitrarily to 1. And I'm going to let R2 equal 1.5. I'm doing this so that my unknown quantity, what I'm solving for, is in the numerator. I want to minimize rearrangements that way. Um, that can be a little bit tricky sometimes with these Graham's Law problems. So do your algebraic approach very carefully, and you'll be OK. All right, so what I want to do is rearrange the equation all right, to solve for the molar mass 2. So I'm going to square both sides. All right, and then I'm going to uh, just multiply both sides by mm1, all right, so that mm2 is equal to R1 over R2 squared times mm1. Right, and I did that so that I just want the substitution to be nice and easy. And now I can just substitute and evaluate. Right? So R1 was 1, R2 was 1.5 because the unknown gas effuses faster. I need to square this. And I had to multiply this by the molar mass of argon which is 39.948 grams per mole. And when I do this, I get an answer of 17.75 grams per mole. Now, I should mention, I just made this problem up. I just made the numbers up, so I'm not trying to relate this to any real gas. But this answer certainly is reasonable for the problem that we did. We knew that the unknown needed to have a smaller molar mass than argon, and 17.75 is certainly smaller than 39.9. So it's a certainly a reasonable answer. I'm assuming I haven't made any silly math errors. It looks like we're moving in the right direction. I hope you found this helpful, and we'll talk another time.